just start this morning and say to you, I pray that it is well with your soul. You know what? Wherever you're at in your life, the Lord Jesus can make it well with your soul. If, if you're in the middle of the trial, if the trial is hot, if the, if the fire is hot and you don't know what's happening in your life, the Lord Jesus Christ, He can make it well with your soul. Somebody else want to testify? Amen? It is well with my soul. Thank you for that. Well, this morning, we're not going to be in Acts chapter 19. I got all nostalgic thinking about Memorial Day this weekend. And so, I've got a message that I've titled, Knowing Love. Now, I just went out and, and looked, and I had the message all ready till last night. I had Tim, but Tim was going to be up here, and we had this great thing planned. And at the last minute, I just felt like that the, the, the significance of Memorial Day, perhaps as I get older, just... Feels like it just, I don't know, takes on new significance. Will you look at a couple of pictures with me? This is pretty amazing. This one, the, the, uh, the, the resolution on it was just a little bit grainy. It wasn't clear, but it was almost uh, just perfectly appropriate that this little girl was going to be able to celebrate Memorial Day with her daddy. Think about the significance of that. Look at this next one. I think this is what's so great about America. Don't you love that? I love the fact you couldn't see their faces in these. It's like insert your face here. Stone, insert your face right here, my brother. That's what is so great about America. Listen to this uh, uh, quote. from. This is from Eleanor Roosevelt. She said, freedom makes a huge requirement of every human being. With me, I don't think you can't read that very well, can you? Okay, okay, my own little back again. Freedom makes a huge requirement. It's so in our culture today, you hear this statement, I'm free and I'm going to do my own thing and I am free and I'm going to exercise my freedom and, and I'm going to do as I want. And, and Miss Roosevelt said, Freedom makes a huge requirement of every human being. With freedom comes responsibility. How about this pic? This was a sobering reminder to me right there in the middle of the... You may not be able to see very well from, from back there, but there's a fellow playing taps on the bugle. It's a sobering reminder that somebody's mom and, or somebody's dad and somebody's uh, daughter or somebody's son or somebody's family member is buried there in the cemetery and, that, and we are here today and we are free because of that picture. Pretty amazing. Let me give you one more quote. This is from James Garfield. He was the 20th president and he was assassinated while he was in office. For love of country, they accepted death. Now think about that. The men who were going off to war, because they loved country, they accepted death and thus removed all doubts about whether they loved their country or not. They loved their country all the way to death and made immortal their patriotism and their virtue. There is no question you when you walk to Arlington Cemetery or to you, when you go to a military funeral and you watch that, you know that somebody either gave their life or died or, or lived and now died as a, as a veteran. They've proven their patriotism and their virtue. So my title of my message today is Knowing Love. And I want to ask you this question. Do you know love in your life? Are you familiar with love? Have you experienced love in your life? Do you know what that looks like to know love? Look at this verse, the beginning of 1 John 3.16. You know John 3.16. That was the Apostle John who wrote the Gospel of John. Well, he also wrote, the same guy wrote to his three little letters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. 1st John 3.16. We know John 3.16. How about 1st John 3.16? This is how we have come to know love. And I will just... I would just ask you, have you come in your life to the place where you know what love is? Do you know love? Look at the middle part of this same verse. Uh, the, uh, the next part is, this is how we have come to know love, almost in a similar way as those folks gave their life 
for our country on Memorial Day. In a similar way, this is how we have come to know love. He laid down His life for us. Now picture what that looks like from God's perspective. Here He is sometime in eternity past, and He says, I think I want to create some beings that I can love. And I'm going to create them. I'm, I'm going to call them human beings. And because I created them, because they came from me, I'm going to love them dearly. I'm going to desire to have a daily love relationship with every one of them. With Andy and with Patty, and I, I miss people with Miss Carol back there. Every day I desire to have a love relationship with them. And so I'm going to create them, and I'm going to put them in the most beautiful place you can ever imagine. I'm going to put them in the Garden of Eden because I love them so much, I want to give them the best of everything. But because I love them, the desire, what I want from them, is my desire is for them to love me back. I want, to I want them to love me in return. I want them to see what I have done for them, and I want to love them. And the only way I can make sure that happens is I have got to give them free will to choose to love me in response to my love for them. If I make them love me, <laughs> have you ever made yourself love somebody? Well, maybe. There may be somebody you're like, yeah, I sure have. You can't, we can't make somebody love us. Love must be the response to something that is love. And so God says, I'm going to give them the best of everything in this garden, but I've got to give them free choice for them to choose to love me back. And so he did. And man chose to disobey God. And sin enters the world. And there is now a barrier between God and man. But God still loves. He didn't give up. Decide, he didn't decide, well, fine, you don't love me. I'm not going to love you. That's not God's response. It's not His character. That's not who He is. That's not why He created us. Instead, God says, I'm going to love you anyway. I'm going to build a plan. I'm going to come up with a way. I'm going to show you that I love you. Now, what is the best way in all the world that I could show them that I love them, even though they have disobeyed me and they have sinned and there's a barrier? What can I do? Can I make the Garden of Eden prettier? Can I spruce things up? Can I give them a prize? What can I do to prove to them that I love them? Ooh, I know what I've got to do. I've got to show them in the ultimate way how much I love them. And so somewhere, God comes up with this, made this amazing plan that He is going to send His Son to lay down His life for us. How else could God show us in the ultimate way how very much He loves us? Do you remember this verse in Isaiah 53, 6? This was us. All of us like sheep went astray. I was going this way. Somebody's going this way. God says, here's the plan and purpose. Here's the way. We all like sheep went astray. All of us have turned to our own way. But the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all. Because he loved us. Look at these. Remember these verses in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 and 7? For while we were still helpless, helpless over here, separated from God because of our sin, for while we were still helpless, at the point in time, Christ died for the ungodly. If you're here this morning and you're ungodly, raise your hand. No, nobody has to. I'll raise my hand for all of us. Verse 7. For, now you see this. For rarely will someone die for a just person. Why else would somebody join the military... And, and give their life willingly to die for the cause. Rarely, sometimes we see that happen. Rarely someone will die for a just person. There are people, there are men and women who have died 
they have died so that I can live free in America. It's almost incomprehensible. They don't go into the military service thinking, well, I want to get killed, but they go into the military thinking and knowing that the cause is worth the cost. Rarely someone will die for a just person, though for a good person somebody might even dare to die. Verse 8, you remember this? But God demonstrates, or proves, or shows His love for us in that while we were still over here, yet sinners, disconnected from God, while we were still here, dis disconnected from God, Christ died for us. You know, on this Memorial Day weekend, as we consider those men and women in uniform who have given their lives, what an incredible sacrifice. We almost can't get our hands around it. Can I just remind you that in that same way, when we most surely did not understand it, we couldn't comprehend it, in that same way, the loving God who created you and loves you and has a plan and a purpose for your life, that God gave His Son while you were still yet a sinner. Do you know love? Do you know that love? Look at the, the rest of, the, of 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. This is how we've come to know love. He laid down His life, and just so we not take that for granted. Yes, Clayton, I've heard that story. Jesus loved me. This I know for the Bible tells. I've heard that all my life. I know that story. Just so that message doesn't get lost on us, John is about to shuck it to the cob. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers. This is John talking and telling us, I was Jesus' best friend. Remember that? The, the Apostle John was Jesus' best friend on earth. And he said, I walked with him. I walked with Jesus. I was his best friend on earth. And I have a message for you, my friend, brother, Rabbi Andy. Because God gave his life for us, we ought to give our lives for one another. That's a little bit different picture of the Christian experience, isn't it? It's taking that same picture where God loved us enough to give and it's now me carrying it into 2018 into Bowling Springs, South Carolina and saying that there are people out there that God is saying, Clayton, perhaps you need to lay down your life for your brothers. We still live in America and it's the land of the free and the home of the brave. I would still argue it is the greatest nation on earth in history. Hands down, if you don't believe it, I'd say... Brush up your passport and go visit another country and come back to America. It is the greatest place on earth. And perhaps I will never be called on to give my life as a martyr for the Lord Jesus. And perhaps I will never be called on to give my life in the military service for somebody else. But John says to us, he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Look at verse 17, the beginning of verse 17. Are you ready? <laughs> if anyone has this world's goods, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness to somebody who lives in the United States of America, middle class America, 2018? Do any of you all know this world's goods? If we just take a minute and we stop and we consider the opportunities and resources with which we have been handed in 2018 United States of America. No people on earth in history have been blessed like we have been blessed. No people on earth have known this world's goods like we have known this world's goods. No people anywhere close Open, pull out your pockets, look at the technology, look at the opportunities, look at the, the resources that we have been afforded. Th this verse includes everybody in this room. This verse includes everybody up and down Highway 9. Have you been to the Biltmore House? I, I mean, th this, was, this was a, you've been to the Biltmore House and you've walked through it. That was an incredible structure back when it was built. I would offer to you, that those of us little, just living simple little middle class lives in 2018, are we have far more resources than they had back then when the Biltmore House was built. Just living in, can I just talk to y'all young people? Just living in America in 2018, 
we have been afforded this world's goods. And I didn't finish the verse and put the dot, 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 dot to get you to think about it. What is John going to say to us when he just said we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers? If anyone has this world's goods, what does it look like? For me to know the love of God and to take that love of God and do something with it. He's going to tell us in the middle of verse 17. If anyone has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his eyes to his needs, how can God's love reside in him? And I just say to you again that I may very well never be called on to be a martyr for Jesus Christ. He may never require my life. But you know what He does require? He probably requires some of my goods. Because He's probably, there's a verse in the Old Testament that says, I have to look it up, it says, you'll always have the poor with you. Why will there always be poor folks in our lives? would suggest that it is to give those of us who have opportunity, who have the world's goods, to share with those around us. You know, on this Memorial Day, I may never be asked to take a bullet for you, my American brothers and sisters. I may never be asked to give my life as a martyr for Jesus Christ, but I may be asked to share that with which I have been richly blessed. Do you know love? Have you experienced love in your life? Have you received that incredible love that God gave for us when He said, I will give the best thing that I have in all of the world, in all of eternity, in all of the universe, the very best thing I have to give is my only boy. And I'm going to give my only boy to demonstrate to you how much I love you. And now then that you've accepted that and understand that and know that, I'm now going to give you the opportunity to share that love with your brothers and with those around you who are in need. You know, the, the, on Memorial Day, those folks gave that ultimate sacrifice. We're often not to get, asked to give that ultimate sacrifice. I would also almost <coughs> offer to you that this is almost as hard to do, isn't it? It's hard for me to stop where I'm at and say, wait a minute, I have been given more, more resources than I need. My opportunity is to take that which I have been blessed with and to give to somebody else who is in need. If anyone has this world's good and sees his brother in need but closes his eyes to the need, how can God's love reside in him? You know, I, th th this message, honestly, is last night is whenever I realized that Memorial Day, I just got all nostalgic and I started, uh, what does that mean to us? What does that mean to Clayton? The challenge is not just for you, the challenge is for me. What does it look like in my life what are the things I need to write down? What are the takeaways? What is the application in my life when I consider that I have been given this world's goods like no other people in history? The opportunity that I have to perhaps, are you ready? Sacrifice. Not sacrifice my life. God's not requiring my life. The opportunity that I have to sacrifice and to share generously with those in need. Clayton, if you're not doing that in your life, how can God's love reside in you? Verse 18. Little children. I, I love that. John, maybe he's, think he's a pastor. Little children, <laughs> we must not love with word or speech. Yes, I love you. God bless you. I hope you have a good week. How are you doing? I love you, Coral. It sure is good to see you at church. I love you, you Megan. It sure is good to see you at church. I, it's so nice to see you all at church. Clayton, we must not love with word or speech, but with truth and with action. You know what? In 2018, God's not requiring us. He's not requiring our lives. We, we, we are relatively free still from persecution in America. What does it look like for Clayton in 2018 to live out the Christian life? 
What is it like in 2018 for Clayton to take the love that God has extended to him and to turn around and extend it to somebody else? Little children, little Clayton. <laughs> my family used to call me little Clayton because my granddad's name was Clayton too. They called me little Clayton just to distinguish that. Little Clayton? I can hear my grandparents saying that now. Little Clayton? Don't just love with words or speech. Don't just tell it. Take that thing in love with truth and with action. I think I have this next, this next quote up there. This was Franklin D. Roosevelt. He said, those who have long enjoyed such privileges as we enjoy. Have you enjoyed those privileges in your life? In the number of years that you've lived in America on planet Earth? Those who have long enjoyed such privileges as we enjoy. Ooh, sometimes they forget in time the men who have died to win those privileges. And I just can't hardly think of a better picture on Memorial Day of, of not only the incredible privileges that we have as Americans, but the incredible privileges that we have as Christians. And you know, we have incredible privileges as Christians because we live in the greatest land on earth, the land of the free and the home of the, the, home of the brave. May I just challenge, I don't know what it looks like to you this weekend. I don't know where this lands. I don't know where it hits you. But can I just challenge you that we not forget in any time in our life that people have died to win our freedoms. The Lord Jesus died to win Clayton's freedom. And that freedom is enough to make me want to do cartwheels down the, down the aisles because you will know the truth and the truth And if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. May I ask you this morning, do you know love in your life? Have you experienced in your life this love right here? We leave it up here all year round. I think that's still the decoration we had for Easter. I bet the cross on Easter on Good Friday didn't wasn't quite that clean and neat and tidy and had some pretty flowers on it. Do you know this love right here? Do you know why? Do you know why Jesus died on the cross? Because he loves you. He did it. He did it for you because he loves you. Do you know that love? And if we know that love, man, what an incredible challenge John has just given us to take that same love and share it and distribute it and maybe sacrificially give it away. Can I ask you the question this morning, what is your cause? What do you stand for? You know, you hear people all the time on, on radio and television, they all have a cause. Everybody has a cause. May I ask you, what is your cause? And then may I ask you, what cost are you willing to pay for your cause? And is the cause worth the cost? And I'll just say to you as Christians, there's a lot of times... There's things that come across social media. There's things that come across Facebook. And they hit me wrong. And I'm ready to respond. And I'm ready to fire back. And I'm ready to get defensive. And I'm ready to get angry. And I have to stop and say, Clayton, what is your cause? Man, I only have one cause. That's to help people fall in love with the God who created them and loved them and has a plan and a purpose for their life. How many times have I have stopped short of responding to one of those crazy Facebook posts or whatever social media? How many times have I have stopped from doing that because I've said, Clayton, that's, your not, that's not your cause. The only cause that you have is to make people know that God loves you a bunch. Hey, Philip, thank you for visiting today. I've got a word for you. God loves you. He loves you deeply. He loves you enough that He took the very best thing He had, just like Braden, your son, the very best thing He had, and He gave it on the cross. The very best thing He had, He gave us our cause. The question is, is it worth the cost? Are we, are we willing to pay whatever little cost we're asked to pay, perhaps not to give our lives, perhaps not to sacrifice our lives as martyrs? Are we willing to pay the cost? 
take that great gift that we have been given and make sure that everybody around us knows it. Do you know that love? Do you know that love in your life? Have you had the opportunity this week to take that love and share it with those around you? As I often pray, I pray for you. I pray for, I pray God, I, I say it over and over, I hope it doesn't fall on deaf ears. I pray for you. I call you by name and I pray that God would bless you a hundredfold and that He would favor you and that He would satisfy your life with good things and that He would exalt you in the marketplace so that people would look and say, what's up with that guy? And we can say, God has blessed my life. God loves me and it builds a platform for us for us to tell the people around us, oh yeah, God loves you too. I pray that God would exalt you in the marketplace. That is my prayer for you. I pray that as you walk out the door this morning, that every one of us, starting with me, will know just a little bit better how much God loves us. That will cause us and motivate us and move us to look at the world around us and decide we're going to love them a little bit better. I pray for you that what God would give you opportunities to share His great love with the world around us, and I pray that He would give you courage to take advantage of those opportunities. I pray that you know that great love. Remember the other verse in, in John where John says, We love Him. Why? In response to because He first loved us. If you're going through a place in your life today and, and you're not experiencing it, and you're not Feeling God's love, can I just say my prayer for you is that you will know God's love. Because that's the only hope that we have for responding to Him the way He desires for us to respond is for me to respond to Him with the same love with which He has given us. This song, uh, you've seen it many times. This is our, our closing song. It's an opportunity for us to reflect on where we are. Uh, thanks to Rollins and Greg for filling in back there today. We've kind of shaking things up for them. But this song, as you've heard it many times, the Statue of Liberty, what a beautiful song that shows us, Clayton, not only are you richly blessed because you live in America, the, the symbol is the Statue of Liberty, but Clayton, you are richly blessed because of that same symbol, the cross of the Lord Jesus. So Lord Jesus, I pray. <laughs> For each one of us this weekend, I pray, Lord God, that as we celebrate with our families, that we will understand and know the freedoms in America, and we will understand the freedoms that we have in Christ. Would you show us your great love, Father, that we may show it to those around us. I pray in Jesus' name. You know what? You'll probably want to stand before this song's over with. That was a
I pray that you just drink. I just pray your saucer has to get a little bit bigger because your cup overflows. Pray God blesses you and favors you. Because you know what? It's easy to respond to God when I see how much He loves me. I pray for you this week that you will understand a little better how very much God loves you. Because you know what? Taking that and sharing it with other people is really pretty easy when I understand how much God loves me. I pray this week that you and your life will know love. That you will know God's love better. Father, we thank you. We, we thank you with our words and with our mouths, Lord. We thank you for the gift that you've given to us. Father, for each one of us, starting with me, I pray that the truth of that would drip down into my heart and into my soul, in the depths of my being. Father, that I will realize a little better this week and understand how very much you love me. Then, Father, I pray you give me opportunities to change the world around me by taking that which you have blessed me and sharing with those. Lord, we celebrate this weekend as the land of free and the home of the brave. We celebrate, Lord God. We celebrate what you've done in our lives. We love you. We pray together.